Silver Defender says, I, re I recently heard about Blendo. Can you tell us what it was like in action? Was it as lethal as the old videos show? Blendo was a robot that Jamie designed for the very first Robot Wars, which were put on by Mark Thorpe here in San Francisco, I think in 92 or 93 or 94. <clears throat> 93 or 94. And this was before BattleBots. It was called Robot Wars. And Mark Thorpe was an old ILM modeler, model maker and inventor. And he, uh, he came up with the idea for Robot Wars. Uh, this is where I met Mark Satrakian and so many of the people that would become friends and colleagues over the years. And I was working for Jamie and Jamie was like, I have an idea for a robot. Uh, I wanna make a spinning disc that we spin up to 30,000 revolutions per minute and then send it into the arena and we how did he say, how did he want to do this? Right, he wanted to spin it up to 30,000 RPM, which is a gargantuan. My dental drill here does not go that fast. And then he wanted, because the matches were only three minutes long, he was like 180 seconds, he was thinking he could tap power out of the spinning for driving and control, which is not wrong. That's actually a great idea. But he was curious about the RPM. And so he called up, Jamie called up a friend of his who was a physicist. And the physicist said, how big is this disc you want to make? And Jamie was like, about three feet in diameter. And the guy said, at that speed, the outside edge would be traveling so fast, it would burst into flames in contact with the air. That the friction with the air was enough to make the steel disintegrate at that RPM. So Jamie was like, maybe it's a little slower. So Blendo became an upside down heavy walk screwed to a spinning steel frame on V-groove bear, v bearings powered by a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. It spun at about 400 RPM. It had on it a pair of, I think, three eighths inch thick uh, hardened steel blades and sharpened steel blades with both the sharpened leading edge and an upper edge. This thing was so scary. I built all the RC and control systems for Blendo. Uh, and it was like the side project that the shop did in getting ready for BattleBots, for Robot Wars, excuse me. Um, the first time we fired up Blendo, we didn't have the sharpened horns on it. It was just a steel disc. Oh my God, there's so many things around Blendo. Blendo's an amazing story. I learned a lot about Jamie and from him watching him build that robot. So the two main pieces that drive Blendo are a platform out of steel that holds the engine and the V-groove bearings in which ride the outer ring that the walk bolts to. So the whole outer case of this thing is spinning. There are spinners now that follow this exact format and it is a remarkably successful format for a battling robot because you can conserve tremendous amounts of energy centrifugally. Um, but, the, but, but it begs this question of how do you get a perfectly balanced wheel spinning that fast in the V-groove bearings? The way Jamie did it was he took this piece of steel, he had plasma cut to close to the right dimension, and then he used a grinder, an angle grinder, to make the, the V that would match the V-groove. And the way he did that was he had an empty room in the warehouse and he set up this piece of steel on a turntable that spun about this fast. What is that? About 40, 50 RPM. It just spun like that. And he set that up and he put an angle grinder on like a drop arm and he just like <laughs> what it sounded like in that room was the worst sound you have ever heard and it lasted for days. But it was an excellent way to achieve a very round V-groove in a size that dwarfed any machine we had in the shop. So he builds this, he attaches it with the V-groove bearings, he gives the V-groove bearings each an offset cam. Uh, that is, their hole isn't drilled perfectly centered so you can actually adjust their tension. That was really good. We got the engine mounted on it, we had a clutch mounted to it, and the way you started Blendo was you actually had to the, the five horsepower engine has a center uh, a spindle that, where you, that, that you rotate and you pull on the starter to rotate it. 
but Jamie threaded that spindle and built a, another thread in a drill and he would and then to power it up using the drill. That would the, the drill was the equivalent of pulling on the, 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 that thing. Uh, and then as it spun up, it would spin the drill back out. And it totally worked. So we're on, we're on Quint Street down in the edge of Dog Patch and Bayview. And we set up a, a circle of sandbags around this thing. This is for the very first starting of it. And Jamie stands on the sandbags, so he's over any part of Blendo that can get to him. He's above it. And he leans over, so terrifying. He leans over the drill, and it spins out, everything works great. And then he backs up, he runs away. I think footage of this still exists. You'll have to ask him. And that Blendo saws, goes just the sharpened blade of the outer rim of Blendo went right through a line of sandbags and right towards Jamie's car. Uh, and I had the shutoff and our shutoff actually worked. But starting Blendo was always that terrifying. And it was, we did it on Apple boxes. We stood, Jamie, I, Jamie was the only one crazy enough. And since he built it, he could take the danger of starting it. And he did. Um, Blendo was insanely successful as a competitor. Um, he, uh, Blendo had four matches in two years. None of the matches lasted longer than 10, 10 or 15 seconds. It was like opponent enters frame, opponent touches Blendo, opponent is dead. And unfortunately, in the second of each match, each year that we competed, in the destruction of Blendo's opponent, Blendo took a piece of their opponent and sent it over the barrier into the audience. No one was hurt. The first time it was a fan, they thought it was great. The second time, the second year, it was a lawyer, one of the lawyers for the production. And in both cases, after our second matches, the same thing happened two years in a row. It was crazy. They came to our, 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 our pit and they said, listen, we have to disqualify you because even though you have met and matched and passed all of our safety inspections, we did not posit that someone could build a thing with this much power to it. And so we need to pull you out of production for legal and liability reasons. And we'd like to award you uh, one of the first prizes in lieu of competition. And thus, there were other winners that won in combat, but we also got a first prize trophy in both of the years that we competed in lieu of competition, which on, frankly is like the best possible outcome. No, there's no reason to ever compete with Blendo ever again. You've already reached the zenith. Um, Blendo was spectacular. A, a, real, a, a really great engineering lesson. Uh, and uh, yeah. And those BattleBots days were amazing because we showed up trying to be cool and we all wore black and you know we didn't talk a lot, but we still made friends that we still have today. Um, the pit of BattleBots and Robot Wars one of the more egalitarian, sharing, supportive spaces for makers that I had ever found and I have ever found. And that was really, that's really, really lovely. Um, uh, SP Productions asks, do I have a new watch on my wrist? Yeah, I do. Um, I have a, uh, right now I'm wearing my Seiko Divers 200 meter watch. Uh, I think sometimes called the Pepsi watch. Um, you know, my Omegas are on the fritz. I, uh, I'm trying, I'm, I, someone's going to, rec someone I know is recommending to me a local watch repair person to fix my Omegas because I'm tired of sending them to Omega. It always costs a lot, it takes a few, it takes months, and they still go back in the shop. So I, I'm gonna get a local watch fixer. And I was wearing the, uh, 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 the Apple Watch Ultra for a while, which I really dug, but when I travel, um, I prefer to know what time it is back home and thus, and that may be something you can do with the Apple Watch. You can get it to display another time zone's time than the one you're in, but I couldn't figure it out and I stopped trying and just went traveling with this watch. So whenever I'm traveling, I keep the watch on my wrist set to the time here in San Francisco and that lets me know, that just helps me understand what's going on at home, uh, you know, what, what the day is like.
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.